Okay. All right. Well, it's 1101. I figure we might as well go ahead and kick things off, Kevin. Um, before we officially jump into it, I just want to quickly introduce Karen Taggart, who is joining us today. She is our local based product owner, specifically working with our community team. And um, we're so glad to have you here today, Karen. And um, I'm excited to talk more about our 2022 roadmap. Um, so without further ado, I will pass it off to Kevin to get us started. All right. Thank you, Caroline. And certainly welcome, Karen. She joined us of just seems like days ago, but um, also months ago. Uh, she's been doing so much. So super excited to hear what she has to say uh, a little bit later. Uh, before then, let's kind of run through our agenda and we'll get started. So um, we're going to just talk a little bit about why we're here today. Uh, code of conduct as a reminder, we'll do our introduction icebreaker uh, and then we'll get to Karen's part of the of the morning. So why are we here? So we're here to meet each other, to learn something about Liquibase, uh, to ask and share problems, ask questions and share problems, um, and to also share insights and informa information with one another. So I know in the past, lots of people uh, at Liquibase and lots of people that don't officially work at Liquibase have had similar experiences. So please feel, uh, you know, we encourage you to step in and, uh, and share your insights. Uh, just a reminder, this is a place for people to share questions, ideas, and experiences. Uh, we expect everyone to be respectful and give each other opportunities to participate. All right, so the virtual introduction section, if you'll go to your Zoom window, if you hover over your own picture and click those three little buttons and scroll down to the very bottom, you'll see a thing that says rename. If you'll just put your first name or first and last name if you want, um, then dash your country, and then dash your role. All right. It's like we're just about waiting, waiting for Edward and Tom. There you go, perfect. And Nathan, waiting for you too. All right, perfect. Good job, everyone. All right, so this is our topic for today, discussing your ideas for the 2022 roadmap. Um, it's gonna be an open discussion. Um, really, we focused on the ideas that we gathered from the forum. So about three weeks ago, we posted a topic asking for really a call for ideas and people, lots of people jumped in, submitted their ideas, went in and voted on other people's ideas. It was great. We really, I, I thought it was a great experience, um, but we realized that um, it probably made sense to get another tool and make this process a little bit easier as we want to do more of it over, over in the future. So uh, Caroline's going to kick us off by giving us a quick introduction to the new idea board and then start discussing the ideas that you all had. Yeah, um, actually, Karen, if you want to share your screen with the idea board, um, that way we can go ahead and pop it up. Um, but like Kevin mentioned, thanks again for sharing your input in the forum. You may have noticed that we have really tried to start pushing the forum more and more as the place for us to convene and share ideas and insights. So if you did share ideas there, thank you so much for doing that. We did add them to this idea board that Karen's created. Uh, and we'll use that going forward. Um, so Karen, I'll go ahead and pass it to you if, if Kevin, you yeah, want to stop sharing. Yeah, okay, now I can, hold on. <laughs> there we go. So wait, only one person can share at a time. I got the nasty Zoom warning, okay. Ta-da, can everybody see it okay? Great, Yes. All we right. can. I am, sorry, I'm trying to do a bunch of monitors at the same time and my Zoom just decided to change its format and it's all good. So hi, welcome. Thank you for everybody for attending. It's really great to see everybody. Um, so I'm trying to get my Zoom so I can see most people. I like to try to see people. All right, good, excellent. So yes, thank you, Caroline. A um, couple things on this, well, a few things. This is a new procedure, new board we have set up and it is open and available for absolutely anyone in the community to submit ideas and feedback. Um, like with everything, it's, you know, we're testing it, we're trying it out, but I think it's a pretty a pretty good way to do this. So we will share the link. Um, you don't need to worry about it right now because this will be the discussion period and 
we're taking notes and recording while we talk here, but just to sort of show you how to use this in the future, it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, and we'll also have it linked on the forum and everywhere else that you already all go to. You want to submit a new idea, even if you're not sure that it's new, if it's just an idea, even if you think someone else may have already put it in there, it's fine. Anything you have, any idea, any feedback about the product, about the community, whatever format, you just click submit idea. It's pretty self-explanatory. You write it in. I will ask people that if you are, um, we all work in engineering, basically, so you know this, that if you're submitting something specific about the product that you think it should do, understanding the use case and the problem you're trying to solve really helps as well. So submitting sort of, you know, you've hit this roadblock, you expected it to do that, be great if it did this instead, or, you know, you're trying to do A, B, and C, and you think it should be done this way, but you're not, you know, not sure, great, put it in there. But the more that we have context on why you're trying to do that, the better and the easier it is to, to sort of make it happen. Um, in order to submit, you will have to sort of give us a vote about what you think, if it's critical, important, or nice to have. It does help us, you know, determine and move things forward. And you just, you'll put your email address in there and hit submit. And in order for it to appear on our board, um, just to keep sort of the, the spam world down on something like this, you will get an email that will ask you to verify, you know, that it says, hey, verify that that's you. And once you verify, it, then it will appear on our, our side. It won't appear right away on this board, but it will appear on our side. And we have an incoming queue, much like many of you, I'm sure you have an incoming queue that you have to review. And we'll see that and review it and start to curate it. And then I will continue to update this board. So it will be something that we, you know, whenever you, in your spare time, if you want to go and scroll and see what other people are, are suggesting and you see something that looks interesting to you and you're like, well, hey, that I, the TCK, that is something that would be really great. And you see something that already exists, same thing. When you vote, you can vote. And then you can give a little bit of feedback telling us why you think it's important. So you would do nice to have, great. And this is why, you know, it, in my use case, I'm using it here. And that would really help me do X better. Um, same thing, you put your email address. And then it's pretty simple that way. Um, so what you can sort of expect, like I said, is we're going to share the link for this at the end of this meeting so that you'll have it. Um, and that way you can keep using it on, you know, as we go in three months, I believe for every quarter, we're going to together, get together and do this again. And as just like with any queue, it will get better and more refined and we'll start working a little bit stronger as a team as we start to work these things out. Um, so I do, you know, I, I kind of joked about when you have spare time, scroll through and see what's here. Any, you know, if you have time, it would be great, you know, and, and get, go through and see and vote and upvote on things. If we see your feedback coming in and we think it's similar to something that's already there, you know, don't worry, we will add it in. You don't have time to go and, and look in advance and try to see if it's already there. But basically, you all know this, the more input you get, the, the, the better the features become, the better our solution becomes for all of us. So I guess at this point, I would just, you know, thank you in advance already, you know, for everything I know you're going to do and for all that you already have, have done. Um, I think that kind of covers it, introduction of the board. Did I miss anything, Kevin, Caroline, Mike, Nathan? No, I think that was great. And I Any noticed, questions? Oh, Sorry, go ahead. I was just saying, I noticed there's a whole bunch of ideas already in the board and nobody knew about it. How did that get there? Where did these oh, come from? Magic! Um, we did have a forum post because we started this idea a while ago, about a couple months ago, maybe last month, I don't even remember. Time, you know, DevOps time. It was like three years ago or it was yesterday. I don't know. And we created a forum post and many of you already went in and added some. Some of you, I will say, probably have also added things into the GitHub issues. That's fine. You can keep putting them there. I just haven't had a chance to go through all of them and add them into this board. So if you think about I'm a little bit kind of like a librarian, I will be going through all of the stuff that's in GitHub that are all the current um, request for enhancements, RFEs, whatever you want to call them, that aren't issues or bugs, you know, that are getting resolved that path and get them into the board. It will take me a little bit of time. Um, if you have put one in GitHub that you think is really important and you wanted to get in there sooner rather than later, I am on GitHub. You can go into the issue, just drop a comment on there, tag me, and it will you know, help, help float it to the top for me to make sure it gets over here and gets into here. So that's where they've come from so far. Great. And expect to see it grow. Yeah, it's exciting. Oh, and I I completely forgot. So as we start right now, you'll notice everything is under consideration because this is day one or day zero even. Um, then we're going to move some and we'll select some as planned. And you'll see them move into planned. 
And then when they move into development, they'll be in process. And then this is crazy. When they get launched, they'll be under launched. Um, you also obviously see that when we do the releases and the release notes and everything. If you follow along those, it'll be recorded there as, as well. But this way we can sort of as a community better follow, hey, we all had this idea. We moved it from plan, we moved over in process. And ideally, when we go into in, in process, um, at some we can um we'll be creating some epics most likely in GitHub and some issues in GitHub, and people can actually help contribute to the, the development of them as well. We would love that. You know, this is this is ours, you know, this is our community, this is our our solution. So building it together is is the key. Any questions about it? Seriously, our discussions, feedbacks risks anything you want to bring up before we dive into the actual product idea discussion well if at any point i mean this is this i'd love to be interrupted during these discussions there is I should say there is no such thing as interruption during this because this is us talking um i went ahead and sort of picked out the top three vote getters from the forum because some people, you know, did the hearts on the forum. I will say, um, actually, did you share the link already in the chat? I'm sorry, I can't never follow chat. Oh, yeah. Uh, Caroline shared the forum link. Did you want us to share the forum link? Yeah, or? let's go ahead and share this. Um, do you have it? Do you need me to, I can drop it in, I think. Yeah, just drop it in the chat. Let me just go ahead and drop this in the chat because it's probably gonna be easier for people to read on their own screen than read onto mine. You might need um, to send it to everybody. I think you sent it just to me. Oh, did I? Want... I am sorry. Do you got I, it? I'll do it. I'll do it for you. I, I promise I know how to use a computer. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> it's just phones that are hard, OK? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for taking care of me, Kevin. I appreciate it. Um, it's team effort, right? It takes a village. Always. So I think I, if you're like me, um, you need a moment to like kind of just digest this. So maybe we just like all, I mean, and if you want to talk while we digest it, that's cool, but take a moment, um, read through some of these, just kind of get used to what, what it's at. We'll be adding more and more detail to them as well. Some of you might see your name in here, Rafal, Edward, Taylor, some of your ideas are in here, Mike, some of your ideas are in here. So I'm going to ask this since um, since we didn't have a lot of voting. As you're going through there at these, if you see one that's not in the top vote getters that you really have a passion about or want to discuss and ask questions about with this group, um, even if you're not, you know, just let me know right now, and I can move it up and we can put that into the discussion. Karen, I have a question. Sure. Will, will you put all other uh, ideas from the forum to this uh, website? Mm -hmm. Because I I don't see uh, all of my ideas here. You had, hold on. I can see two out of five. With this one, right? And then what was your other one? I may have just accidentally not published them and I created the cards on my end. Let me double check with them. Okay. Because I remember creating them. I just may not have, there's a setting where it like publishes them, you know?
Yeah, because I know I actually would like to talk about that one because I thought that one was, oh, it's not letting me move it because I am not, this is my public view. Do it on my side over here. Learning new software is fun. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be nice though. This is a good way for people to be able to read each other's comments and, and yeah. comment. And I think that'll, it'll make it a little bit easier than the forum. And now we can centralize on a place for most of the ideas. Awesome. I see Tommy already sending in some stuff <laughs> while we're talking. So that's awesome. Cause I can see it on my internal queue that hasn't been processed yet. And same thing with Andrew. Andrew put a vote in. All right. I like it. See, someone wanted to talk Pulumi. So I'm trying to navigate like two views at the same time and I'm getting myself distracted. <laughs> it's all good. We got Pulumi because there's some votes there. And let me double check, Rafael, what's going on with the other ideas you had and why they're not showing up. Yours. Yep, sure enough on that one. I never finished creating the card for one of them. Sorry about that. And I see the normalized context. Yeah. That one I just didn't. Forgot to put your name on that one so it didn't show up. Hang on. There's one more. It's a pretty cool tool because on my end, when I can look and see the comments. and see exactly what sort of card we've connected them to. It's very nice. All right, and I forgot to create one there. Oh, I know, I guess I wanted to talk, actually ask about that one. I'm glad you reminded me because I wanted to ask about one of these. So Rafal, one of the ideas you had, wanted some clarity on if you wouldn't mind talking about, you had said, hold on. You know what? I'm just going to bring this up. It's not like a secret. Yep, so y'all can see what I'm looking at. And I just, okay. So one of the things, can you guys see it? Uh, see no, it uh, looks like it's just tied to your product board. Oh yeah, yeah, we can see it. Yep. Okay, cool. Good, good, good. So this is the one I actually had wanted to talk about because I had questions on. And mostly you need to also understand too, y'all. I'm a, I'm a newbie too. So helping explain to me is very helpful because then make sure that I, you know, we all really understand it. I kind of have a joke where it's like, if I understand what you're asking, then I can teach you, like, then it's solid because I don't have an expertise in this. So the, the liquid base checks one, Paul, can you uh, just walk us through what you're talking about there, if you don't mind? Yeah, uh, I thought it was obvious, but uh, okay. <clears throat> as, as far as I know, uh, liquid base checks works like, you know, we are checking something in our change set and if if some checks are not passed, then we have it in a report. I would like to have a, some kind of new syntax to add, uh, for example, in one of my change set, something like we can do with the checksum just for the, you know, tell Liquibase, do not check this change set. I want it to not have comments, rollbacks, I wanted to have drops or other other things that could be checked, but don't throw this chain set in this report anymore. Similar to valid checks on any. We have some, you know, sometimes we just wanted to do this like that. So it would be nice to have that kind of new syntax working with both uh, SQL chain sets and XML chain sets. 
Okay, so are you trying to skip certain change sets within a change log under certain conditions? Let, let me ask. Mm. Let, me, let me ask the question real quick. So, what I think you're saying is there's a new liquid base checks command. Uh, checks command is that what we're talking about? Mm. No, not the, not a no. uh, not a not new check checks command. Right. Uh, you know, I'm writing a change set and mm -hmm. I'm putting a, a syntax. As normally I can type context is something, then I would type something like do not check this and put it in a change set. And when I will run liquid based checks, it will not, it will skip this change set. Do not, you know, not check this change set through any of the uh, conditions we have configured in liquid based checks. Okay, so when you're running the liquid base checks command, you want to have a way to specify for a change set that you want to ignore that change set. Don't yeah. include that in the okay. Yeah. Ignore change set in a check. In a check. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Or change or whole change log. Right now, just yeah, to... yeah, yeah, because that's what we're saying here is, okay. Hold on. I have that connected to here. So we're going to call that skip selected change set or change logs in liquid base checks. Uh, Nathan, if you're talking, you're on mute. <laughs> yeah, Zoom was just telling me to. Uh, too many mute buttons <laughs> for me. Um, so sort of a lot of kind of what you're looking for is, um, you know, you have uh, with some of the various kind of linting tools and stuff, you know, you're able to like, in, where it's checking your source code that says, you know, this could, this could generate a null pointer exception. And you don't, you, you want to be able to sort of say in your source code, yeah, I know that the, the check would fail in here, but it's fine. I've kind of looked at this or whatever, just be able to kind of annotate or, or note that in the change logs that way is, is kind of, I think the end goal you're looking for, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay, so it's up there now. And you also had this one, which made total sense to me. And Nathan, I don't know if you saw, did you see this one? This also. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so, so this is gonna be in, yeah, because we use sort of context as a, and I forget the, the order too, which is kind of where, where it's, coming from here too, where we, we have kind of context for an argument and contexts in the, um, um, as the um, change set attribute. And so we can, it's probably worth, yeah, supporting both in both places so that however you do the, however you do the plural, it, it works. Yeah, exactly. Does anybody else run into this? Kevin raises his hand. Yes. Andrew's kind of, meh, okay. The one of yours I really kind of wanted to dig into, Rafael, personally, and again, it's me being selfish, was, was this one. Because I think, um, and if folks have it, just time to take a look at this one. Because to me, this seems like a, and again, this is me reading it, it seems like it has pretty big impact and would save you a lot of work if this was in place the way it is. You describe it, not the way it is now. Uh, yeah, but but when you were showing this product board with ideas, I saw the idea from someone else. Uh, can you get back to the to the main site? Yep. Uh, there is uh, oh, uh, change log parameters accessible usable in. You see this? The accessible one. Oh, where am I seeing it? Uh, the second row, second. Yeah, this one. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, this would do. This would do the work the same as I want to achieve. I mean, if I not if I am not defining context in my SQL chain set, but I will define it in my parent change log. And then I would like this context to be, you know, passed to this. A change set. And this one would do the work also because I would like to use 
uh, substitution uh, variables in my uh, XML chain set. So this is also important for me. So this, uh... But if I will use uh, variables in uh, as a context in my XML chain set, then all um, child chain set should uh, inherit uh, so the sense. context because now uh, in all of my SQL chain set, uh, I have to type manually context is something. When I have XML chain sets, I just do use this variable uh, and I define it once in my root and it goes everywhere. But with a SQL chain set, I have a lot of additional manual work. Gotcha. Great. So I'm going to kind of keep these sort of two together as sort of solving the same problem. And we'll try to better define it on this end. And yeah, the, they are kind of they are kind of related with okay. each other. Anyone else have that issue? The issue that Rafael is describing or questions for him about what he is hitting here? So it's the the where it's not doing the variable replacement in, in SQL, is that, are you saying it is like, if you have a, a SQL XML tag, it's not doing the replacement in the body of that SQL tag, or are you using like a, doing an include all with a bunch of raw SQL files or, you know, where, where is it that it's not doing that replacement? Um, so I was thinking it, it should, and if it's not, um, that's probably more of a bug. Yeah, do. maybe maybe it's a bug. It, it's not working with the normal uh, normal chain set uh, okay. in in SQL. But uh, okay. Karen, can you can you open my idea once yeah. again? This one, uh, I added comments yeah. there. Uh, now it works like. Uh, um, can you go up a little? Yeah, uh, this is the include all, and I defined context test context and i have a path database tables and then i have a, a chain set create table and i am not defining context then we have context null in the database change log table but if i will manually this is the b point if i will manually add context to the sql chain set uh, then the result is test context Liquibase is adding the end word, my context. I don't know, maybe it's a bug, Nathan. You, you should know it better okay. than me. Yeah, I think I, it's maybe misunderstanding what you're going for there. So, okay, yeah, this is, I think, different than I was asking on there. But if I will, I, I also try this. Uh, well, if I will, uh, in my SQL chain set, do like context and leave it empty, then uh, it will not work. It will just uh, output null, no value. It, it, it has to have a context defined in SQL chain set, then it works with this end. So it, it is concatenating to context then. So we, we, have may have. we have a question in from Taylor that says, does this sort of context inheritance already work in Liquibase? Um, and I think it, it, it's probably less of an inheritance thing where, you know, the, the, the context that you're running in kind of get set, that they're only set at, you know, kind of as an argument in how you run Liquibase. So when you run your Liquibase update, you're saying, this is the context that we are running under here um, so that then when you're specifying the context in, you know, a particular change set or something like that, what you're really kind of doing is looking to filter, you know, it, it's sort of a filter, kind of an if statement of should I run this or not based on the context that were set earlier. Um, and so, um, you know, like when you're when you're setting the context in you know, in your change set like that, you're not setting it. So there's nothing to inherit that way. It's more it should you should you um it's more should you run that chain set or not and so then on the include all when you're doing that context equals text test change set what that should be doing is that similar filtering out so it should only do that include all if the test context is set was set at runtime 
um, but it's not sort of passing it along there. Um, so that's where I, I don't, I, in, inheritance is sort of not something that's sort of set up in the, you know, kind of defined in there right now, I guess, if that was maybe answering your question, Taylor. Maybe um, it, this does beg the question in my mind, um, Rafal, what, what behavior were, were you expecting or are you expecting when you put a context on um, that include all statement for that? It, it, are you expecting what uh, the behavior that Nathan just described or are you expecting something different? He actually defined his expected. He did a really nice job. Oh, he did? Okay. Yeah, so his expected is if the change set has its own context right here. Oh, then it's the only one that should be used. So the value should be, okay. I, I mean it, if if in my single change set, I, I defined context, then do not use the, the parent context because it is here. If there is not, a context defined, then use it from a from the root. Okay. How, however, this idea with using a, a substitution variables in SQL chain set would also uh, resolve my problem because then I would I could just in every SQL chain set define context is this property, so it would work also. So. This, this is also related with other ideas. Okay. So it's the concept of sort of having almost a, a, a master template value on context that scales when necessary, but you can override it when you specify it in a certain change set. Yep. Yeah, that makes sense. Context overrides in sub, uh, in, in sub change, change sets or change logs. Yeah, I also posted uh, something similar about the labels. Yes, but uh, it, it's it's the same case. But uh, if liquid base would allow using uh, substitution variables in SQL chain set, so I would use it either in context or labels. Then gotcha. it would be a universal solution. So before we move on to another one, I just want to check to see if anyone else who's here is dealing with this of sort of having, I know I know it wasn't technically inheritance, but it's kind of a, a master context that can be overridden. Nope. Andrew says no, Charles. Yeah, I see a bunch of no's. I don't know there. So the other ones that have been moved up, this one, um, actually I saw, I think it was Andrew or one, was it Andrew or Charles? I saw somebody voted actively for Pulumi. Andrew, was it you? Yep. Um, it's funny because I put that one in here because we started to hear a lot of humming about Pulumi and it looks like you guys are starting to implement it. Yeah. Do you want to talk us through a little bit about what you're seeing? <clears throat> and oh, well, they just, we have, we run a, a lot of microservices and Kubernetes for all our environments. And, and uh, they're just recently moved to using Pulumi for those uh, release management across those environments. We've been talking, we, we don't have it yet, but we've been, that's one of the reasons I started using Liquibase was to manage database changes for CI, CD. And it just makes sense if we're gonna move all of our, all of our management like that to Pulumi, uh, liquid base integration in Pulumi sounds like a really good idea. <laughs> so <laughs> It's funny, I literally just taught, I had a conversation with them last week, just sort of like a, hey, here's what we do, here's what you do. It seems, yeah, because it's like, okay, you're doing infrastructure as code for developers in their languages. We're kind of trying to do database as code for developers in their languages. Seems like there might be a hand in hand. So you guys have just started this. Yeah, I mean, just within the last month, we've been uh, going to Palomi, but we've gone pretty strong to it. Okay. And I keep on getting, um, my pet project is to get the SQL stuff into CICD, and I, real life keeps on interrupting me, but we'll get there. <laughs> I would, uh, is anyone else, uh, even if it's not Palumi, is anyone else dealing with, you know, maybe, I know obviously HashiCorp Terraform is, 
is out there for sort of similar stuff. Is anyone else sort of looking at that, the integration of databases code and infrastructure as code yet or at all? Okay. Well, Andrew, if you don't mind, I might bug you at some point. And if you come across sure. this stuff, bug me directly like, hey, Karen, here's an idea for this. It would be great if it did this. Um, I'll con consider you my subject matter expert. How about that? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I feel sorry uh, for you, Karen. Stakeholder. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, no, my knowledge of Pulumi is I've talked with people and I've heard them present. That's, oh, look, we have a, a junior member uh, joining us. <laughs> yeah, liquid based junior. <laughs> <laughs> we like them. Start them early. Can he approve? Can he do code review? Is he good for that? Uh, can you uh, repeat the question? Sure. I said, can he do code reviews? <laughs> and now he also he only knows how to code in uh, Scratch a little. Huh, that's good. But he he won't code now because he's already in pajamas. <laughs> <laughs> it's nap time somewhere actually or bedtime right um well actually this one's underway so if you don't mind i would love to talk a little bit about this one because this is a, a project that did get some votes on the forum and seems pretty popular and it's not super specific yet and nathan's been working a lot already on this so i don't know if you wanted to talk a little bit about this and maybe we can hear from the community and see if anyone else has input here yeah. Um, yes, I can. I can talk to it a bit. Cool. Um, the the overall kind of um, sort of larger project is that um, you know the 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 testing that we have and kind of the patterns and that sort of stuff has kind of grown organically over the last many years. Um, and so there's there's kind of a, a scattered bunch of different ways to do things um, that makes it kind of hard to hard to find the right spot to do things. Um, and then especially the um, ability to sort of test how the integration back to the particular databases go um, gets to be gets to be complicated um, to, to set up there's we, we don't have great patterns in there so far and without the great patterns and the you know not just kind of patterns but the um, you know sort of the, the tool and library and whatever just kind of adding a test for a small thing ends up being kind of the well to, to, to add this test I need to do this which means I need to do this which means I need to do this which is way more work than I should want to do for this particular test um, so we've Traditionally, kind of rely too much on um, on some, you know, either manual testing as we're working on stuff, or um, uh, you know, kind of some some example change log files that that get kind of continually added to, and and so it's hard to kind of tease apart what is this really testing, um, you know, what what is it covering, what's what's it not covering, and so um, you know, it's it, it makes it kind of then. You know, doesn't give us that safety net to add in a bunch of these sort of larger features we'd like to do. So um, the, the big goal is trying to find ways to make it more obvious what's being tested, what's not being tested, and to be able to kind of include um, tests as we're, as we're making changes. Um, and so, um, you know, I, I have areas that I know are hard to, um, hard to test, but curious what um, you know, as, as other people are maybe looking to um, kind of contribute or understand what's working or not working, is there, you know, kind of what, what would make it easy for everybody else to be able to kind of um, add and improve um, kind of the tests along with um, kind of feature changes they're looking to do? Is anyone on this call contributing code or has contributed code? Not yet, which is fine, yeah. which is totally fine. I would love to know um, why why not. And all reasons are very valid. It's not a judgment. It's legitimately like, is testing one of the barriers? You know, like why, why aren't we contributing? I'm not either. You mean contributing code to Liquibase? Yeah, yeah, oh. PRs, yeah. Never looked at it. <laughs> Haven't had bandwidth to look at it, frankly. Yeah, bandwidth. Yeah. yeah. Appreciate that. Yeah, same here. It's just trying to get a, uh, trying to get time to actually start looking into things. I just haven't had time to get into this. But it's one of the things I would like to start looking into, but just yeah. being pegged right now. Yeah. You mean engineers are busy? What? <laughs> <laughs> 
it's totally fine. It's we always one of our goals, obviously, is to try to make it easier for everybody to contribute when they can. And test coverage is, and testing is a, is a good part of that, I think. Um, what as you come across things, you know, and you think about testing ideas, it's just holler, send them in. Um, it'd be helpful. What, um, if, actually, quick survey really fast. Which database databases are folks using? I'm curious. Either drop it in the chat or just holler. Oracle and Microsoft SQL Server. Hey, um, hi, my name is Nutunash. I'm, I'm new to this group. Today is my first day. Yay! Hey. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm not sure how this thing works here, correct? But we have been heavily using Liquibase starting last year. And, um, you know, I was hired to actually implement some kind of a CI CD for database deployment here. And we selected Liquibase and we have a currently running pipeline using uh, GitLab. Okay, and good. We use it for four four types of databases in, in Panamac. We use Snowflake very heavily on Snowflake. We use Postgres, we use SQL Server and MySQL. So I had a couple of challenges. I do not know that those things are already been discussed here before because this is my first um, attempt to attend this kind of meet, uh, yeah, meetup group, correct? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, with the with Snowflake, we have challenges at generating the change set. It doesn't work, but it works for other platforms like um, MySQL and, and Postgres, it works. So it doesn't work for Snowflake. Mm -hmm. And another challenge I have, uh, I have uh, recently um, uh, experienced is with Postgres store procedure or functions, if you have a dollar in the code, um, Liquibase doesn't handle it in a straight way. So what we had to do is we had to create a JSON file for defining the change set and then deploy it using another layer of wrapper between this XML file and, and, and then actual SQL, dot SQL file, correct? In the middle, we had to create a JSON file. So is there any way we can just streamline that and remove that third layer comes in creating a JSON layer with change set number and, and file pointer and things like that, because developers get like totally confused. Like, hey, I'm, I'm doing it for Snowflake in a straight way, correct? I have a XML file and then directly I'm giving this SQL file name in the XML file as an include and it straight away works. But for Postgres stored procedure and functions, I have to create a JSON file I had to put that JSON file into an XML file and, and then XML calls the JSON file, JSON file parse that, and then it calls the SQL file, correct? So three layers instead of two layers. So that's my story. <laughs> you look like you're gonna say something, Nathan. Oh, I was just um, thinking on, is this, it was a dollar sign that's a problem? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and that should work. I'm curious kind of where it may kind of come down to kind of where the specific um, error is that would probably let us kind of know what's going on because yeah we, we shouldn't you know we shouldn't be doing any special handling of dollar sign stuff but there ends up being kind of a few different stuff that it goes through that uh, working that problem may be best on the if you ask the question in the forum because then you can put in the stack trace um, that you're yeah. getting and all that information and then we can kind of help figure out um, what's going on there? Because yeah, it, it should work fine. Yeah, uh, I will. Um, I'll put it in the community. Cool. So you're aware of the forum and you know how to get there and everything. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. And regarding that snowflake uh, generate change set, I'm, I'm not sure it um, what goes with that. Why it's not working? For Snowflake, um, have you seen that we have an extension for Snowflake um, that's like an additional jar file that you can um, get and add to your uh, class, to your, like your Liquibase lib directory? Are you using that? We use um, a, a driver. Yes, we use a driver. Um, 
Um, because yeah, besides the um, uh, besides the driver, and I'll I'll put the link in here as well too. Oh, thanks. I was gonna go find it, but um, uh, we also have a um, liquid-based Snowflake extension, um, which kind of adds and improves Snowflake support. Um, since Snowflake's a, a newer database for us um, to support, we have this as a sort of an additional download that. Um, adds in the Snowflake support that lets us kind of iterate on a little bit quicker and, and independently of um, the sort of larger liquid based core. Um, and then as, you know, as, as the uh, Snowflake support uh, kind of gets, gets wrapped up, then we can look at bringing it in, you know, as along with the rest of them. Um, but if you're using Snowflake, um, if you make sure that you're using this extension in here, um, then it's going, that should improve um, quite a bit, I would guess. Um, if you're not using it currently yeah uh, we are using a driver is com.snowflake.client jdbc and then there is a class path which is liquid based as drivers and then snowflake jdbc 3.12.17.jar yep yeah. yeah so you'll need you'll need that that part you need because that's the snowflake provided um uh library for connecting to snowflake itself um, mm -hmm. And what this this um, this jar file will do, um, the liquid base dash snowflake dot jar, um, is that uh, gives liquid base the other the, the sort of additional information we need to kind of understand that you know that it is a snowflake connection and what the sort of liquid base internal differences need to be. Um, so you would need both this liquid base snowflake jar and also the um, the, uh, the the other one that you have. Um, you need to include both of those either in the class path like you have. Um, or you can just put the two jars in. If you're using the CLI, um, there's a there's a lib directory in where you um, install Liquibase. And if you just put those jar files in there, um, Liquibase will automatically use them without needing to add them to your class path setting. Okay. And Sorry. I was just going to say that I put the link to the Snowflake getting started tutorial from the doc site uh, into the chat. And okay. so you can also check that out. It all it does take it it says what Nathan said and gives you some step by step instructions on doing that. So if that okay. helps. Okay. Yeah, thanks so much. You're welcome. I'm going to take a look at that and try it out. Yeah, and as you're using stuff like definitely keep posting questions and suggestions. Oh, we are we, using very heavily. Right. And we're continuing to try to expand our support of is probably the best phrase to say it because like Nathan says it obviously is it's a different little a little bit different of a beast so if you're really deep in it it would help you know us un understand better what's working and not working yeah yeah we, we have uh, 15 projects in, in snowflake actually so pretty heavily uh, more than 150 developers are working on snowflake and wow. all use uh liquid base nice wow how are they finding it in general? I'm curious. And we're the good, bad, and ugly, all of it. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, initially we had challenges setting up the automated pipeline because liquid base is one part, correct? But whereas mm -hmm. we have the entire pipeline we had to build using um, the GitLab. So we had some challenges actually doing that, like um, architecting that whole stuff and then uh, access management, who can do what? Um, so once we had that, I mean, developers love it because uh, now they can deploy it anytime they want, okay? And they do not have to wait for a DBA to actually do the deployment. It, it goes through it. So one, one thing we are trying to improve in that is the code, code quality check. And I saw someone actually talked about SonarCube. We tried to, mm -hmm. we tried to do SonarCube, but SonarCube did not support in, in liquid base, correct? But um, what, the, what we came to know that with, with the new release, um, there are some, some rules we can, uh, we can do to check the code quality, correct? And we are in the development phase of that feature implementation, but we are looking forward for more advanced type of rule, defining advanced type of rule for code quality check because Great. some of the things like sometimes it is very dangerous because if developers actually sneak in say uh -huh. grant statement or create a user statement 
in the code, it's hard to actually you know capture those um, and 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 the and the service account we are using to deploy the code it, it is it has actually broader privileges because it has to create all those uh, objects now if they sneak in that grants into it i mean they can grant to anybody mm-hmm. they're trying to actually control uh, uh, or filter those kind of things at this point the the feature which they released in in december it can actually only say that, oh, there is a grant statement, but it cannot stop it. We gotcha. wanted to actually see that, oh, okay, if there is a grant statement, stop the deployment there itself. Do not continue the deployment. So if there's a grant statement in the local base, in the, the code that's being submitted via local base, stop the GitLab pipeline. Yes, yes, exactly. Stop okay, the I de- love that, deployment by itself. the way. <laughs> there is. <laughs> There yeah. are return codes. So in the latest version, there are return codes that the checks will actually do. And so as part of your pipeline, if it returns a, a return code, you can actually stop the deployment. Which which version is that? Is it the December release or there is another release happened? January. Uh, 461, I think, was the where we put the return That's codes in. It, it's 46 or 461. So if you're at least there, you should be able to uh, gather the return codes on a check. You can even set your own return code. So go from info all the way up uh, based on kind of like the sonar cube numbers, uh, major, minor, um, uh, severe, and you know, do your, do your, uh, whatever you need to do in your pipeline. If it's above a certain level, stop. If it's not, you know, continue, etc. Okay. Yeah. We currently use 4.4.3, I see. So we have to upgrade it to the latest one then. Yeah. But we would be trying that. Awesome. To stop that. Cool. Good. I love it when a plan comes together. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Yes. And thanks for all of that information. Keep it coming. And, you know, there's no wrong way to do these sessions when we all come together. So nobody worry about that. Like, we all learn from each other, obviously. Um, we only have about five minutes left. And I know Caroline has a couple things to, to talk about. Um, everybody knows how to vote, but before, I hand it back to her. Any of these where you're just like, like we may not have time to talk about it now, but you're like, wow, if I had that or that's really a big deal. I know I'm going to get on there and add some ideas and vote up some people's ideas. So I will definitely do that for you, Karen. Thank you. And we'll keep promoting this and send it to your, send it to your friends and family. It's almost Valentine's day. Who wouldn't want this as a Valentine's (laughs) gift for your sweetie. I know I would. <laughs> That's sarcasm for the, actually, it's not for me, but um, this is, Kevin got me this little present. <laughs> so I'm like, thank you. <laughs> I like being able to better, I don't know, we all have so many good ideas and so much more experience than I will ever have. So this really helps me listen. And I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, thank you. And you all know how to get in touch with us. And I'll hand it back to Caroline, actually. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Karen, I think that's a great idea. And you know, as you're working through things, if you're running into problems, you're getting frustrated. Um, if you need quick help, go to the forum. But if you have, if it spawns an idea of something that's just not in the product, go to the idea board, drop it in there. That's super helpful. Um, and then we'll we'll pay attention to it every day. So thank you. Let me share my screen again, so we can. Yeah, we'll just go over community updates really quickly. Um, as always, every month I publish a recap blog. We like to feature some of our top content, some of our favorite supporters, people that have developed code. Um, I have to give a shout out to Rafal. He's generally a very top content contributor. So thank you, Rafal. Um, But um, we've talked about latest update or latest versions of local base um, 4.7.1 recently released. It's a patch release. Um, If you take a look at the release notes, you'll see that we had 4.7.0 earlier in January. There's some really cool new stuff in there, including the init command. So I would take a deeper dive in there. If you've not yet updated, um, go for it. Take a look. Let us know if you have any feedback. And as always, thank you to all of the first-time contributors. 
you too can be a first time contributor. Um, and so if you'd like to learn more about how to contribute, um, you can go to our community page on the website and learn more. And you can also just reach out to us as well. Uh, if you go to the next slide, I wanted to also mention, we have some people here that are top scholars at local base university. Um, we do have a new associate exam um, and it's for an, it's for the intermediate level uh, people. So you will have had to complete all four of the intermediate level courses to be able to earn the certification. Um, it is actually a paid certification. It's our first paid um, certification. So we've had a few people in the community take it. We had a few beta users that um, went through it with flying colors. I'm very confident that people here would pass it as well. Um, but take a look at that. If, and also, I know we have some new people here. Uh, we do have our local based fundamental certification um, that is free. That is a really great way to get started with local base or kind of brush up on some of your skills. So if you've not yet uh, taken the fundamentals course, I would encourage you to take that and take a look at it. And then coming soon, some exciting news. If you've been at our meetups for the last few months, you've noticed that we've had a constant or consistent slide um, asking for people to join our team, our company local base as a community manager. We have found our person. Um, we will be announcing very soon um, who this person is. They will be joining our team later in February. Um, so I'm ex super, I'm super excited to introduce them. We'll be doing a spotlight on them, and you'll learn more about them soon. I'm just putting a little teaser in there. I like to tease. <laughs> um, and as always, we'll see you next month. We meet every uh, second Thursday of the month. Um, we will be doing these roadmap meetings quarterly, like Karen mentioned. So we won't meet for the couple months to discuss the roadmap, but do keep your eye on that product um, portal, or I guess we should call it the ideal portal now. Um, and next month, we will do more of a tech talk style meetup, um, talking about cool new things going on in local base. We have a couple ideas, but um, if you have ideas that you would like to learn more about, we always want to hear them. You're welcome to post them in the forum. Um, and then the following month, we'll do our typical ask me anything. So it's a great opportunity for new users to have questions or if you're just stuck on something or have feedback, that's another great opportunity as well. Those are my updates with a minute to spare. Um, anybody have any last minute questions or comments? Okay, great. Well, again, like I mentioned, this has been recorded. Uh, we do post the recordings to YouTube and I will send out a note in the meetup group so you can access the recording. I'll also send the slides and a link to the idea uh, portal. So if you want to go in there, add more ideas, upvote ideas, we would totally welcome you to do that. And then as always, if you have questions or you need or you know someone that has questions about local base in general, uh, we are really taking a hard look at our forum. That's where we're really hanging out the most. Um, and we have people monitoring it constantly. So um, I encourage you to take a look at the form if you've not yet joined it. So that's all for me. All right, thank you, Caroline, and thank you, Karen. Very thank exciting. You. All right, and thank you everybody for, for participating today. Um, super helpful, and we hope to see you again next month. Right. Bye, everybody. Thanks, Bye, everybody. Thanks for joining. Bye. Take care, everybody. See ya.